Many blessings. This is Vera Luz from Divine Timing Coaching. Welcome to our April astrology forecast. And wow, whose life is not going to change this month? That is the question. Um, honoring the Jupiter Chiron conjunction in the sky, the sun coming to it. We need a lot of mentorship this month. It's one of the biggest themes. That's why I'm wearing my, uh, you might know this image of the, the great philosophers, you know, that it's the Athens philosophers. And this is a month where, where wisdom and philosophy can really help to guide us through a lot of transition. We have every, every sign is basically getting hit by a new planetary transit. So in summary, all the mutable signs now will have a big shift because Saturn has now moved into Pisces. So you're going to get a square, an opposition, or a conjunction, Gemini, Virgo, Pisces, and Sagittarius. Pluto just moved into Aquarius just days ago. And so we also have all the fixed signs now starting to get a Pluto square, right? Especially the very early degrees. So that would be Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius. And then we have the shift of Mars. Finally, for some of us, right? We waited for Mars to move into Cancer. And this has just happened this week. And so now the cardinal signs, Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, and Libra, will also be getting a square or an opposition or a conjunction, a challenge, confrontation from Mars. So Cardinal Fixed Mutable, we're all going through huge changes now. That's why this month of April is a game changer on every level because of so many planetary ingresses or changes of signs. And also, we're coming into the month of the eclipses. And so we're starting eclipse season at the end of the month and a Mercury retrograde. There's so much to talk about here. So we're going to go sort of week by week, talk about the eclipse, the full moon, all of the major cycles. And I'm going to share the screen with you here. So get your cup of tea, maybe not coffee, because you probably have enough uh, you know, energy and amplification going on with, with some of these transits going, going on right now. So uh, be careful with your caffeine intake. Um, airy season is always a time where, you know, we already have a lot of uh, a lot, lot of uh, caffeination moving through us and stimulation. So <clears throat> that is something to watch for, not overdoing the the, the fire. And, and speaking of that, there you see actually uh, the fiery chart here that I wanted to share with you. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take us actually back. And I just want to show you when Mars ingressed into Cancer. Uh, so this is this is actually on the 25th of March. Okay. And this is a big shift. And I, I want to start here because it marks a movement of this month that's very interesting into a very watery place. Um, we have actually a grand water trine with this shift. And there's beautiful healing opportunities with this to open our consciousness to um, go into our spirit to do a lot of uh, therapeutic work. You're going to see this through Mars, trying to Saturn. Okay. And then let's just take it to April 1st. And you'll see how there's a Mars trying Saturn exact. And look at the South Node in Scorpio. So we have the Cancer Pisces Scorpio access here of the Grand Water trying. So much healing can be trans transmitting through us during this time. Psychic channels are very open. We're extremely empathic. And this is a very big shift of Mars from the last seven months being in Gemini. Wherever Mars has been, you know, you, you've been activated, you've been defensive, you've been irritable, possibly. There's been some conflicts there, whatever house that's been in. If you have planets in Gemini or the mutable signs, there's been that fiery, at times like aggression or like competitive streak in you with, with where Mars has been um, for seven months. And now we get Mars moving through cancer till about the end of May. So almost two months. And, and this really, this slows down the warrior, right? Mars and puts his defenses and his aggressive desire and passion into a much more nurturing, protective, caregiving sign, right? The, the great mother of cancer. And so what we might start to see, and I have a whole nother video coming about Mars and cancer because there's so much to talk about with it. But um, so, so check that out. But like, 
in a nutshell, because this is a marked shift of the last seven months, um, this is going to be very transitional, right? If you feel like, look at, they had Saturn and Mars and air signs, both of them shifting within a month of each other. And now they're in water signs. And, and this is sort of demanding that we do a lot of inner work. Uh, because when we think of water, we think of the emotional body. We think of um, also the imagination. And this grand trine at the beginning of the month, it really goes until about the 5th, 6th. So let, let's move it to April 1st. And you'll see that it, Mars is just starting to leave that trine with Saturn. This is, this is so great, though, because it's really activating a, a deep desire to commit Saturn, Mars activating Saturn, to, to working out some of those karmic complexes in our soul with the South Node in Scorpio, and, um, and to use a lot of spiritual tools. And it can be dance, it can be art, it can be you know visual art, it can be writing. I think writing is huge with this, this time. Um, it can be anything that can help us unlock the unconscious it's definitely a month to do shadow work. And a lot of the shadows are probably going to come up through relationships to our family, our, uh, our, our, the people that we live with potentially, um, or any kind of domestic situation. And my sense is that this is going to possibly, as, especially as May comes in, a lot of people are going to feel a desire to, to relocate. Um, why? Because the cancer need is for emotional security. And we're going to have Mars coming, um, not this month, but as we move into Taurus season and Mercury comes in, you'll see this pretty soon. Um, Mercury and Sun moving into Taurus, we think about material security, physical security, financial security, maybe needing to save money or invest it really wisely. Of course, this has been in the collective consciousness around the banking and what's been happening with that. And, and then you have emotional security needed with, with the cancer placement of Mars. And so when we see this, and then we'll, we'll look at some of the, the transits, especially mid-month with, with Mars squaring Chiron, that you're going to see that there can be some, some, some issues about like, what do I really want? And, and am I frustrated getting there? And is there something in my home space that is preventing that? Right, that feeling of emotional relaxation, contentment, um, inner peace, right, and where my inner child can really express itself. And this is a month where childlike energy can be very strong. You know, Aries, we have Sun, Chiron, Jupiter, Mercury, all starting the month in Aries. And when you see that much Aries, you are thinking a lot about, you know, Aries moves very fast, right? And then we have this slow down that Mars wants us to do, that Saturn wants us to do, and definitely the South Node and North Node as well. And so it's like, we might be moving two steps forward, one step back, or we might need to be taking and like sort of daring, taking that Aries risk into the deeper recesses of our soul and say, you know what? I, I, I don't want to be run by the unconscious anymore. I don't, I don't want to be run by a family pattern, right? Or a um, something in a past life, you know, um, however we may relate to that, we will become aware this month of, of specific wounded patterns in us, Sun, Chiron, Jupiter conjunction, which pretty much starts the month. You know, the, the Sun will, will hit Chiron by the fourth, I think, fifth. Yeah. And, and so if we move it forward, check that out. This is our first main lunation of the month, which would be the full moon in Libra. And this is a really potent full moon. Um, we have the full moon in Libra, okay? Um, and so it's going to be a couple hours after this, uh, but it is on April 5th, April 6th, depending on where you are in the world. And what we know always a full moon in Libra brings up questions around balance and equality and fairness and relationship, right? Um, it also relates to collaborations and our ability, um, our ability to go for what we want as individuals, Aries, right? Always at this time, we get very self-motivated, self-focused, but then we realize that we are so limited on our own and we really need the support of others. And I always find it fascinating, right? Saturn, the planet Saturn, 
is in its exaltation in Libra, meaning it's like a honored guest in Libra. You're like Saturn. Well, Saturn is a, a professional planet, right? It's about seriousness and hard work and discipline and ambition. And it's exalted in the sign of partnerships, collaborations. And so we think about like, wow, well, I can only grow so much independently, Aries. And um, what becomes essential this month is to recognize where I need help and support. And this full moon is going to bring that up. It's also going to bring up where I might not be getting that support from a partner, for instance, or a business partner, love partner, business partner, colleague, again, the home situation. And so we're looking at this full moon being quite triggering for many of us. Definitely the Pluto and Libra generation born between 1970, 1988, uh, sorry, 1984, especially around, you know, 74 to 82. Um, definitely, this is a big relational transit for you. A lot about your work as a artist, as a mediator, as a diplomat in the world. But when you have a moon, a full moon, conjunct Chiron or, or uh, opposite Chiron, right? The sun conjunct Chiron. Um, and in Jupiter has just transited Chiron, every one of us is processing some deeper soul wound. And it's going to come up like a culminating moment during this full moon. And it's an invitation for us. It's an invitation to go into that part of ourselves. This is a very Chiron lesson. I talk about it in my, my book about Chiron, the Aquarius Doms, the shamanic artist within each one of us that's able to look at that wounded story which is the story of feeling like a victim, a feeling like it just can't happen. It's the same repeating storyline coming up again. And what Jupiter here this last month has been about is like, we must find the teachers, the coaches, the mentors that can help us reframe what's happened um, and, and what, what is happening, right? Because there's something repeating, right? And, and, and when we can look at a story of victimization or, or a, a struggle that repeats, there is medicine in that wound. Something I've been working with with clients in my own writing process through this is the idea of failure, right? And, and Chiron, you know, uh, when Chiron is activated, there's a part of us that feels like we've failed, right? Now, this could also come up with Saturn, right? And, and, and especially if you have mutable planets, right? Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, you're going to hear that heavy kind of, you know, hard, stern voice of Saturn. That's like, you're not doing enough. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't been successful enough yet, you know, and all of that. And, 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 and it can feel like a failure. And, and an invitation is to look at the place where you may feel like you have failed or you are failing and, and look at like, like write about it, right? Maybe dance about it. Maybe like, you know, uh, paint about it, right? Make music about it. I do that a lot um, because these different art tools are very Piscean, right? We don't really know the way through, but we know that we can learn to swim if we just open ourselves up to letting spirit move through us and reflecting our psyche to us. And this is a month where we must do that. And we're going to learn that the failure that we might think that we've had actually has a lot of success or a nugget of revelation or self-discovery, Aries, inside the middle of it. We might even find the path where we thought we failed, the path of our greatest service. And this is the message of Chiron. And so uh, if it hurts, feel it and express it. I was listening to Julia Cameron recently, The Artist Way, and she talks about, you know, that we are meant, um, you know, not to just like go through therapy as a kind of like excuse oriented kind of practice, right? Like, oh, this is the reason why and that I am how I am. Instead of the more creative invitation, which is express this process through you, right? And create from the place that has hurt the best music, right? Some of the greatest art, some of the, you know, most beautiful dances and choreographies, all of them have come from that place, right? The films. And so that's a big invitation this month. Remember that Libra, full moon and Libra, Libra is an artist, right? And it's learning how to take all of the, you know, the 
the different uh, materials that it's working with artistically and create a, a masterpiece of balancing you know, um, the, the different colors, the different tones, right? Uh, Libra is extremely design oriented. And, and so just note that, right? That this is happening. This is part of this full moon and that there is a movement towards a, an inspired perspective that's coming, a real juicy, joyous possibility, optimism coming through on the other side of this full moon, through this full moon, if we're doing the work, because the sun is about to conjoin Jupiter. See this. So as we move forward, we're going to see that sun-Jupiter conjunction. April, you know, by April 8th, it starts to come into orb and we're going to feel it. You know, I like to give about a 10 degree orb for the sun. So, you know, put it, put it out till about the 19th. And this only happens for 10 days every year. And this is a beautiful month, again, to, to call in the teachers, the mentors, and to step into that role yourself, because Jupiter and Chiron are both teachers, you know, but this sun Jupiter, it's more like, where is the wisdom that I can access every day that can keep me Aries motivated, driven, full of, uh, you know, passion, even, you know, e even if I, I, I'm confused, you know, but this is, this is, this is giving me energy and activating me and i want to help other people right and and um i want to i want to share this with you this is this is sort of this beautiful uh lesson i learned from the great natalie goldberg who wrote writing down the bones and she had these um th this zen master that she worked with for years and years her teacher and when she was going through a divorce she was sharing that the zen master told her you know these three primary things this is very chiron right? A Zen master is a, the most Chiron symbol, right? Like you might not like everything the Zen master does, right? Like you might slap you on the back with a ruler because you're not sitting up straight for your meditation, right? Or you're, you're, um, you're kind of moving, um, moving into kind of lethargy of your spirit, right? And this is what he's referring to here, right? The Zen master. The first step is to continue under all circumstances. So right through it play through it, dance through it, right? Like we said, adventure through what's happening. Um, but the ability to articulate an emotion as it's happening, and this is the power of writing. And I really believe that that therapeutic writing is a big part of what we're moving into uh, under Saturn and Pisces, and especially with, with the cancer element with Mars over the next two months, a great way to process our emotions. Don't be tossed away was the second point. Like, don't let your your energy go everywhere all at once um, and, and sort of lose a center. Come back to your practice. Make positive effort for the good. So that means, you know, being altruistic, uh, you know, making a, a nice meal for your son or daughter or your, 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 your beloved or you know, uh, maybe you're starting to plant some seeds in the earth, right? Um, writing, dancing, um, offering some charity to another. Do something, right, that takes you out of maybe a, a, a very kind of whirlpool-like emotional downward spiral and instead, you know, offer something back. And this is something that uh, is talked about at length in the Bhagavad Gita, you know, that Krishna is always reminding us to take every action that we do and offer it to, to him or to great spirit or to the goddess or however we want to connect with source. But the littlest thing to the biggest thing, not that that one actually exists, right? Because we don't know what's little. We don't know what's big. And this is part of the humbling right now, right? Like we might realize during this full moon that and this entire month, that what we thought was little was actually monumental in our path, and in our um, in our woundedness, in a part of us that feels separate. And you know, the Course in Miracles teaches that the only problem that we have is that we believe that we're separate, and then we reinforce that the ego, the separating force in us reinforces this idea that it's separate. And then it starts to even constellate relationships around it that 
that reinforce this theme. And, and this is why it's so important during this full moon that whenever we are coming into a separating story or a projection in a relationship, uh, and, and this could also be about our parents, right? Like if we process, oh, it's because they didn't do this, right? Or it's because my grandmother did this or um, whatever excuse we have. Um, we have to be very careful of that because it's that part of us that it wants to separate and wants to keep itself, you know, um, in, in kind of competition or war with the world in duality, which which ultimately isn't real. But man, with with the Aries, so much so much Aries energy um, to begin this month. You know, Aries is competitive. It's self focused. It it it's definitely the sign of like otherness because it's like myself, and and we have to understand that Aries and what's happening as Jupiter finishes his journey in Aries in just one and a half months. We're being asked to become leaders, and. Really, as this eclipse comes in shortly after this, we're it's in the last degree of Aries, and we're going to have to step into a role of saying, you know what, I am ready to not transcend the wound, but to say, you know, I I understand that I gave my higher self gave this to me for some larger purpose to serve, and I have to I have to own it and and uh, but not be owned by it, right and. And, and this is this is our big test now. And this is why using art and creative processes to move through this, it it, it means that we're not we're not fatal uh, we're not fatalistically determined by a wounded thing. We are actually um, in a constant creative process with how we are going to offer that in sacred service. Right, coming back to Krishna, offer everything you do to the most high, to, to the God force, because actually you're not doing it, right? Whatever gifts you've, you've been given and, and, and even how you've committed yourself over time, there is, uh, there's a force, there's a source inside of you that is doing that through you. And we have to become very humbled um, this month to recognize that process and to recognize how we are constellated by so many archetypal forces and patterns. I'm just going to take a sip of water here. So let's move ourselves forward um, and just, just note, right, that if you do have planets in the cardinal signs, that with this Mars transit now, Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, and Libra, whenever the moon comes into those cardinal signs, you're going to feel like here, here we have it on the 12th. Um, and we're going to back up a little bit here, but um, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel the Mars square or opposition or, you know, uh, conjunction with, with, uh, um, with Mars. And that'd be irritation. And, and, and these would be dates to really put down in your calendar, right. And to know like, okay, it's pretty feisty out there today. I might get reactive. Somebody else might road rage might happen moon Mars. Right. And, um, just to let's take us back and you'll see that this is going to happen before the month of, of uh, March ends. And so you can also reflect on this, right? But there it is, March 28th, 9th, tail end of 30th, right? You got Mars um, hit by the moon, but exactly on the 28th. Lots of emotional stuff moving. And, um, and then you're going to see it again full moon in Libra, again, when the moon goes into Capricorn, and then when the moon goes into Aries. So we'll, we'll see that coming up here. Let's, let's go systematically through the rest of the month. So we talked about the full moon coming in April 5th, April 6th, and let's take us forward from there. And um, there is some supportive energy during that full moon because Venus rules it in Libra. Venus rules that, and she's in her home sign of Taurus. So there could be a great opportunity here for you know sensuality with partners, good night to do some dance, um, you know, just really get into our sensual nature um, and, and maybe out of our heads. 
And you're going to see that Mercury has just moved into Taurus here. And this is going to be a very long transit of Mercury in Taurus because this month, Mercury will go retrograde in Taurus. So the Taurus part of your house has a lot of mental focus this month. Sorry, the Taurus house in your chart has a lot of mental focus this month. And so pay attention to that area. It's gotten a lot of activation, right? Because this is also the house where Uranus has been for the last three and a half years. Lots of changes going on in that house, lots of surprises, wildness. This is also the area where the eclipses have been. So this house, has, it's, it's requiring that you really look back over the last year and a half, especially. What has been transforming, evolving, growing for you? And Mercury wants you to put a lot of examination there. Now, this is going to bring up probably for a lot of us, as Mercury stays in Taurus, you know, through through May um, and, and, and retrogrades there, it's going to bring up some issues around finances, values, um, how I'm earning resources, my connection with the earth, like we said, material security. And, and so we really want to start examining that as soon as Mercury is moving here into Taurus on the third. And if we move forward, right? Mercury on the North Node, something very significant happening for us at that time, uh, early April. And then we'll start to see that Mercury will come to this conjunction with Uranus. And this is quite significant because he doesn't get right there. But if we go to April 20th, well, now this is this is where the energy really intensifies. And it's because we are hitting the eclipse. Okay. And literally, it's it's pretty much the same day, you know, within the 24 hour period, we have Mercury stationing retrograde. So let's look at this. We're going to see the eclipse coming in. April 20th, and it's right here at the last degree of Aries. So this is a new moon, solar eclipse, right here. So it's it's literally like one day before Mercury goes retrograde in Taurus. And so this is the second new moon in Aries, and it's the first eclipse happening the second in the month, it's the first eclipse happening in Aries. They've all been in Taurus and Scorpio the last couple of years. And so now, again, we're looking at the last degree being hit. And so there's a culmination moment here. And there's something that's really, it's going to fire us up in a lot of, a lot of ways. And remember that Mars is going to be ruling this eclipse. Now, this is really fascinating because everything happening with Mars the transits from Mars to your chart and in the sky has huge karmic ripples to it. Consequences, um, soul contracts. Why? Because Mars has been ruling the South Node, our collective karma, our soul history, you know, uh, what we're trying to work out and excavate collectively in Scorpio, right? Think about how trauma re relief work, how shamanic work and psychedelic work over the last couple of years. You know, everything since about 18 months ago has been a lot about, you know, how do I share resources with others, big money, right, wealth, all of these scorpionic themes are ruled by Mars. So Mars transits bring up this deep collective soul healing that we're all doing. And then now, starting with this eclipse this month, Mars rules the North Node like where it's going, it's going into Aries. So now Mars transits will also signify how we move forward collectively, how we step into our leadership, how we assert ourselves, how we find motivation and drive and um, hopefully like right use of the ego and the desire to, to go and you know, be a spiritual warrior, right? But you see how powerful that is that the Mars transits are linking our South Node collectively, our soul's history 
the dragon's tail, they call it, and the dragon's head, the north node, where we are evolving collectively, um, which has a lot to do with like creating our own reality, Aries, choosing our own adventure, right? And it's going to have to come through finding emotional security, Mars and Cancer, dispositing this moon, okay? And look at what happens during this full moon eclipse and Mercury coming to retrograde the next day. Mars begins to square Chiron. Okay? And this you're going to see April, uh, pretty much the rest of the month of April, Mars will be in that square to Chiron. There it is, exact. See here? There's that moon Mars square. Note down the 26th. This will be a pretty intense day uh, because both the moon and Mars, eh, yeah, pretty much that day, moon and Mars will be square Chiron. See the 17, 16, 18. That's a big day. Uh, but what we're seeing here is that the rest of the month, pretty much Mars will be squared to Chiron. So what do we want? How do we get it? Where are we frustrated in our desires? What does this have to do with our family? Um, is there you know, friction, tension with our family? Um, how can I take conscious action towards achieving um, the goals I have for emotional security and material, physical security now that Mercury is in Taurus? and retrograde. And note that when Mercury goes retrograde, he's just two degrees away from a conjunction to Uranus. So you're going to see this here. We go back. That retrograde happens. Like we said, oh, there's the station right there. It's between the 21st and 22nd. And so um, look at the, the 15th degree of Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius. These are sensitive degrees, about 10 to 20 in the fixed signs because Mercury is going retrograde stationing right there. And he will change directions again around 10 degrees. So now we're looking at like a good chunk of the fixed sign between five and 20 being hit by that Mercury retrograde. And this is exactly where Uranus has been, shaking up our life, bringing some chaotic components to us, some changes going on, some surprises, some excitement, some revelations, maybe even some epiphanies and awakenings in those parts of our chart, right? Wherever those thick signs are, especially the Taurus house. But a lot of chaos with this, a lot of uncertainty. And this is why I'm saying that we think, you know, by the end of this month, there's a lot of changes brewing for a lot of us. Um, we have to be careful with mental anxiety, um, nervous energy with Mercury conjunct Uranus. Um, the mind can be in a lot of places, but yet Mercury is in Taurus, which is very slow in its thought process, very methodical. And so how does that work with Uranus, right? Which is crazy and excitable and, you know, the mind is very activated. Well, Uranus does rule astrology and the metaphysics. So we could be really applying that more holistically, more systematically in our life, um, can be, again, really great time to be studying finances, financial astrology, looking at how you're earning money, how you could in your, uh, in your life. I'm planning to offer some, some training around this topic of like astrology and finance because of this transit, because it's so strong for us, such a long-term cycle here with Mercury and Taurus. Um, and then of course the sun moves into Taurus. You could see it right there by the 21st, and there's always a time in the year where we're like, okay, co you know, coalescing or consolidating our finances and our resources, um, getting really connected with our home. You know, Taurus and Cancer are signs most associated with the home and astrology, and here we have Mars here and the Sun and Mercury, right? So um, this could be a, a time where we really need to put, um, you know, some concerted effort into establishing that material and emotional security. Collectively, again, this could be a, a big shakeup with the markets, with with uh, the banks, 
maybe we do think some big news is coming out at this time and something that could be quite a bit shocking. I mean, maybe this is also about, um, you know, something with crypto and Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been sort of starting to detach itself um, from, from the markets, from Wall Street, uh, actually growing during this banking crisis. So maybe something is coming up with that, but we're we're looking at alternative modes of, of 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 value and of exchange, and maybe there's a lot more trade starting to happen between people. Um, but it it is very important. We start to look at how much am I paying for, you know, for home for rent, and um, what what kind of stress is that bringing to me, or is it is it working out for me? But issues around home landlords. Um, you know, agreements like that. We have to be really sensitive to that this month. And, um, you know, realize that a lot of this month too, this Jupiter and the sun were together, you know, in the middle of the month, the markets tend to not like that kind of what we call combustion of a planet. You know, Jupiter is a planet that raises hope in us and optimism. And, and when it's combust, it's kind of like enraged or like, engorged by the rays of the sun. Um, if you go middle of the month, you're going to see, there it is, you know, pretty much it's, it's beautiful conjunction. It inspires us. It grows us. And like we said, for teaching, for wisdom, for philosophy, but then, you know, remember that a planet that close to the sun or exactly conjunct the sun, we can't see it. And this is very important because the idea of like invisibility of a planet, because it's so close to the sun, we can't actually see it in the sky, meaning that its um, significations can be kind of invisible or we don't experience them outwardly. And so Jupiter, you know, the hope, the optimism, the faith, is there something that comes in to block that for us? Does it have to do with this? this Chiron woundedness that some of us feel. Now, you don't see it in this chart, but what we are moving to in the U.S. is very, very important to mention with this because the U.S. is about to experience, and this is happening all during election year, it's Chiron return. It happens every 50 years, right? So this, um, at the full moon in Libra, this transit with Jupiter, the Chiron movement through Aries, Mars squares the U.S. Chiron in May. There's some potentially big wounding to uh, the country. This could be some kind of violence that, that takes place. I think that uh, I, I did look into this, but I think there was a, another shooting recently. Um, there could be something like this, unfortunately, going on. Um, but there's some kind of violence tearing through us. And this is why we have to channel it, you know, in a positive way. But but specifically with the U.S. Chiron being hit with this. And remember, the U.S. is a cancer, right? July 4th. And so once again, here it is, middle of the month, Mars hits the U.S. sun. And we think, again, that could be warlike energy, aggressive energy, defensive energy. So we would expect some of this month to be seeing some news stories, whether that's towards Russia or um, China or something uh, going on with some kind of, you know, defense aggression uh, coming out in in terms of, of of the U.S. maybe policy or action in the world, um, you know, it, and it, it kind of it feels like it's starting that sort of political thing. You know, I know that D Donald Trump just came out with his, you know, first kind of. Uh, public speech about his campaign. And we might see that this, this is starting that whole, you know, energy we see during election years, which is usually quite ugly in the US and like, you know, um, very separating, very dualistic. And, um, and we're all going to be tested, you know, whether we live in the US or not, we're going to see this kind of playing out. Um, but there is a, there is a potential for a lot of breakthrough here, a lot of healing coming. Um, if we do the work, now we could have a lot of fun as well, you know, um, because Venus will go into Gemini this month. There it is. Um, this is happening around the 11th. Now, 
she leaves her area of you know rulership in Taurus, but she comes into Gemini and and here this is kind of cool because Venus will trine Pluto. And so middle of the month, there can be a maybe we have uh, some wealth come to us with that, or it has to do with like some kind of social relationships that we're, we're starting to form, some networks that we're a part of, some marketing that we're doing. This is an important time to maybe get out with a marketing message. Um, Gemini, Aquarius, you know, these are air signs. Um, also just meeting more different people. You know, Gemini is a lot. Of course, we had Mars there for a long time. Um, but it's a lot about being able to shape shift and be in different communities, world bridging, you know. She'll be there all uh, the rest of April into, into May. So um, again, this keeps us excited about learning about different topics and being around different people, having a, a more varied social life. And um, whatever your Gemini house is, now Mars leaves. And so that, the, the kind of, you know, that malefic kind of aggressive defensive energy of Mars and Venus comes in. And so whatever house that is for you or planets you have in Gemini, you're going to get a blessing from the goddess. And it's going to feel quite different to having that sort of potentially ragey and kind of young, you know, very mm, kind of grind of Mars there. And, and it'll be a lot more like, you know, flowing, graceful, uh, playful, um, maybe even, you know, just a little bit more. Um, yeah, juicy from Venus, more more fun that 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 she will bring to that Gemini house in your chart. So enjoy that. Of course, she will square Saturn as this happens. So she come, you know, as soon as she comes into Gemini, she basically starts to square Saturn. And so eh, it's not so fun right away, but as she moves away from Saturn, so by 18, 19, you know, of course, we come to that eclipse which is, um, you know, going to be strong, but we do have Venus leaving the square to Saturn. And the Venus-Saturn square, this is why, again, the middle of the month, uh, from the fifth, let's say, from the eclipse to the middle of the month, there's going to be re relationship tests. There's going to be value propositions, questions. What am I doing in this relationship with this career path, with how I'm earning resources or not. Um, even my artistic nature, like how I'm expressing myself or, um, you know, sharing my art with the world. Venus square Saturn will bring some, often there's a kind of a feeling of a block or a challenge around those Venusian things. So there's a test around a relationship. Does it have resilience, tenacity, um, foundations to it? And the same thing around how I'm earning and, um, you know, all of my social life, you know, like, is this really going to endure? If not, like, maybe I don't have time for it, right? So I kind of throw myself maybe into a new social environment. And I'm like, eh, these really aren't my people. Or these are my people. And I want to give like a lot more energy to them or to what we're creating, you know, it could be a dance community, it could be uh, some kind of writing community, Venus goes into Gemini, a sign of writing. And this is why I think, again, writing therapy can be so helpful for us during this time. So yeah, but that feeling of stuck, right, with Venus square Saturn, um, some kind of heaviness or a need for some kind of healthy boundary, right? Um, but, you know, can I, I want to be intimate, Mars and Cancer. Can I be intimate, Venus square Saturn? What does that really require? What kind of you know, transparency is needed. Um, this is this is really important this month. Um, I want to share with you um, a poem that you can take forward with you this month. It has a little airy flavor to it. Um, it's called Wild Self-Abandon. Be wild, innocent, electric, psychokinetic, elasticity of cat's eye. Chasing the god vehicle wing of the butterfly. Elasticity of cat's eye. Chasing the god vehicle wing of the butterfly. And hold on for dear life with one claw. And let all the other fur hang out. And make love to the wind with Buddha belly intention. Laughter, liberation, self-abandon. Wild self-abandon. 
Yeah. So this month, it's just so much about, yeah, letting, you know, taking that risk to be so open to the moment, to articulating the, the wound and recognizing it as a gift. Um, being aware that, you know, there's a lot of energy as the month moves on that could feel like a high degree of nervousness or anxiety. We don't want to short circuit our system. We want to use that to have a revelation or an epiphany or an awakening, right? And really be looking at where you are resourced and resourcing yourselves. You know, is there, um, I think, I think as the Uranus energy gets hit, right, by, by Mercury, and, and then the sun in, in May, there's also something here about AI and our relationship to it, you know, technology, the speed of things, um, how, how fast we want to move as a society, as an individual. Um, and, and just remember, like, if we're thinking of traveling or moving during the end of April, beginning of May until the 15th, um, Mercury's retrograde, the eclipses are happening. So a lot of shift comes and shift happens, we say, and, um, and, and be careful with that. Right. And, 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 and yet it, it might feel like you, you're compelled to do it, but know the, the stresses and the hassles and the, the mental challenges that can come up with a lot of shift coming. And it's, it is, it's strong for the, you know, the zero degree of the fixed signs or the 29th degree of the cardinal signs. Life is going to change this month. And for most of us, the end of the month looks very different than the beginning. And it's marking a new phase, right? Pluto, Aquarius, Saturn and Pisces, Mars and Cancer, all of these planetary shifts. Um, and we're, we're moving into a different, a, sort of a different texture now that we're all, you know, going through. Um, I think that um, if you are considering a move, I would love to support you with astrolocality. Um, I've been really getting into um, these treasure maps that I use from one of the softwares that I work with, where we can actually go in and we can look at, uh, for instance, love and romance, vocation and career, friendship and family, all these different areas and find, you know, the hot spots for that, right? Like where in the country or on the earth that those areas could be really strong for you, right? And we can actually pull up reports for all of these different um, categories. See, like this is this is different. You know, this is love and romance now versus a friendship and family, right? But we can also pull up these really cool reports. I think I have one here um, that I'm, I'm making available now to clients. Um, maybe you can't do a full locational astrology reading, although... If you are going to move, I hope you do. That's my niche. That's what I love serving people with. There's going to be new videos coming out about that soon. But we can actually do a best places report for you, which will show you, um, you know, a, a hundred different places that are the best for friendship and family, for love, for career and innovation. And uh, if that's something of interest to you, uh, definitely check out the link. Um, you know, we'll we'll put that in in you know below. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, I, I really appreciate you subscribing, liking, sharing it, and um, and stay tuned again for more videos about locational astrology, about the eclipses, the retrogrades. Uh, I also want to share that I pulled two cards today, so I'm going to end with these cards, which is a child of the cosmos from the Starseed deck, and one of the things that I love about this card is, you know, the image it's it's a lot of surrender, right? It's a lot of like opening ourselves to being sort of penetrated by the stars and by uh, the patterns that the stars reveal to us. And I hope you're excited about continuing to study astrology, human design, my other favorite tool um, that could be really helpful this month, right? Where we're, how do I be authentic? How do I honor another's authenticity? That's what human design shows us, right? Um, and and child of the cosmos, like you know. You know your inner truth this month, um, but you also know you need support in accessing that. So be asking for that, be be creating it. And I pulled the gene key card as well. The gene keys are part of human design. And um, this is, um, you know, the codon in our DNA, the gene key 58, 
which um, has a lot to do with what makes us feel vital and alive, right? And, and then also in its shadow frequencies has to do with dissatisfaction and interference. And so is there something coming into your life as we talked about this month that can be kind of taking you off track? How do you stay on track and, and, and stay in what makes you feel vital? And ultimately the highest frequency of the 58 is bliss. Follow your bliss is a very Aries mantra. And so uh, let that take you into this month ahead, into the full moon coming up, into however you're going to do workshops or trainings or coach or be coached uh, this month. I would love to continue to work with you. So stay in contact. Uh, if you'd like to get on my newsletter list, just visit my website below and you can join there. Uh, I have a lot of trainings coming up and uh, also an online school. So I'd love to continue to support you with that uh, or with readings, coaching. And I just really want to give you support this month because it is a game-changing month, maybe maybe the most intense month of 2023. So enjoy the ride, take a lot of breath, give a lot of breath. It's been uh, wonderful to serve you today. My name is Verluz. Namaste.